How's it going? Labor Day weekend, Monday here. I filmed this whole video already on my cell phone and when I put it in the mount, I must have unrecorded it because I was using the back camera because it's better and I didn't film anything. So now I'm filming this on the front camera and the quality won't be as good, but at least I'll be able to know when it stops filming or something. So anyways, I wanted to make a video. You guys asked for a video on the 1022 I was shooting in my last video, so I wanted to put that together real quick. I've actually been meaning to make a video of it for a while now, and I will. So if you're just interested in the 1022, I'll put down here uh, the time at which that video starts. But before that, I'm just gonna you know do a little talking and driving video. I don't do these very often, obviously, because I don't even know how to do them. But my weekend has been so busy. I'm actually leaving my brother's barbecue to go to another barbecue, and I just don't have time to just sit down and make a video, well, like a full video. So I'm gonna talk, talk and drive. I figure it's good to multitask while, while I'm driving, might as well make a video. So what's new? You guys have probably noticed, so I got these sunglasses, the Oakley Slivers, and they came with these like, uh, kind of like chrome lenses that I didn't like. So I told you I was gonna look into lenses, and I have been looking into lenses, and I found some lenses, Revent Optics. I'll link to link to them below. They make lens replacement lenses for a lot of different kinds of sunglasses. So I picked some up for the slivers. I wear the Asian fit slivers because my face is Asian-y a little bit and kind of shaped different, and Asian fit sunglasses just work better. But the regular sliver lenses work in them. So I picked up these lenses and these are just black, polarized, and the safety rating on them is higher than the Oakleys. So I just shoot a lot in just my regular sunglasses and these are like a higher safety rating. So they're great, great for shooting. Polarized glasses are great for driving and fishing and it does some weird stuff to your screen sometimes. But been really, really happy with these lenses. So Revan Optics, uh, I'm gonna replace my other my other pair of sunglasses with some lenses as well because I'm really pleased with them. So if you're looking for lens replacements, whether you've scratched your old old ones or don't like the color or whatever, definitely definitely worth looking into. I'm wearing another shirt, another test shirt. I haven't had time to build my website. Once I have a free weekend, I'll just build it and I'll let you guys know when merch and things are available on my website. I'm working on some other projects, uh, CNCing. So I bought a CNC, a cheap a really cheap CNC just to test some stuff. Here's a CNC mold uh, out of HDPE for some holster tweaks that I'm making. So I'm making my own molds for certain guns now and I'm gonna be releasing a new holster design that I'm pretty stoked about. So stay tuned for that. I'll make, I'll make a video about holsters and stuff once I kind of have this stuff dialed in. I ordered another CNC and another 3D printer and I'm doing all of these like little prototypes, nothing crazy, so don't get too excited, but just like little little things that I wanna start manufacturing. So I'm prototyping a lot of them. And man, the prototyping process is just, it's intense. You, you think something in your head and you're like, oh yeah, that seems pretty, relatively straightforward. And you make it in Fusion or CAD or whatever and then you either print it or CNC it and you realize, well, that's not gonna work and it takes you like 10 iterations to get to a working product and then another 10 iterations to kind of refine that product into something that's like more usable. And then at that point you're like, oh actually what if we just completely reworked how we were gonna do it and like tweak this and it's completely new. Anyways, prototyping some little things uh, and that's fun for some products I wanna bring to, to market. Nothing, nothing revolutionary at first, just kind of some fun, fun little things. I mean related to related to what I'm into, not like little toys or anything like that. But yeah, so prototyping some things. Maybe I'll show you my 3D printer setup and CNC setup and all that stuff if you guys are into that. Let me know if you're into that. Uh, just like comment below like, oh yeah, we wanna see your setup. And I'll show you what I got going on. I actually filmed some stuff like some of the stuff I bought, not really unboxing type stuff, but setup just in case I did wanna make a video of it. What else? I'm wearing a multicam black hat because I love multicam. This is a Tad Triple Aught Designs hat. Uh, though I think I bought like the last one because I think they were sold out. But I'll link to the hat below in case they're back in stock. I had a friend in Washington, uh, Gabe Cam, and another friend, Danny, who had this hat. And I was like, that's a cool hat. So I've had to pick one up. 
And yeah, I don't know what else. I'm gonna do a review of these Solomon shoes, uh, speed crosses that people have been asking about. I have some other shoes I could probably do shoe reviews on and maybe I'll get into that uh, because I like reviewing things and you guys like watching review videos sometimes. And sometimes you like vlog videos, but this is gonna be the most bl bl blurring, this is gonna be the most blurring vlog video I've ever done. But I wanna just make a video. And what else? I've been testing a few wallets. So I had the Ridge wallet, you know. After that video, and even before that video, you guys have been recommending me all these other wallets. The most popular wallet that I've been recommended was the Trayvax. I picked one up because I love OD Green. So I've been using it a little bit. There's another wallet I don't have with me that I was using for a while called the Flipside wallet that another bunch of people recommended. So I'll be doing some wallet reviews coming up. Uh, I got some new flashlights. I'll be doing some flashlight reviews. I got this this crazy beast here. This through night, I think it's like TN36. TN36. This is the most powerful flashlight I've ever owned. This thing is a beast and I love it. Another flashlight that's get, been talked about quite a bit is the Streamlight HLX. This is a thousand lumen flashlight uh, and I like it because it's flexible. You can use an 18650 or you can use two CR123s to power it. The thing I like about 18650s is Through Night makes this other thing, I think it's called the C2, which is a little portable battery pack. But the battery is an 18650. So you can use it to charge your phone or whatever, but you can also use it, the battery itself, take it out and you can power a flashlight like the Streamlight. HLX runs on an 18650 or it runs on a CR123. So stay tuned for reviews on those lights too. Kind of my new new lights that I'm most excited about. Now what I'm really excited about is building out some pistols. I'm getting a pistol back that I've had for a while, but I wanted to like breathe some new life into it. So I got a new Cerakote job on the slide. Looks sick, done by Mad Custom. Mad Custom Coding is a company that I met when I was out in Washington at TriggerCon. Really cool guys doing cool stuff with uh, Cerakote. Just kind of like really, really high quality Cerakote applications. So I'm gonna be working with them on a couple of projects. First is this slide that I'm getting back in the next couple of days, I think. They shipped it back already. I'm gonna be building an AR. So a lot of people have asked me to make a video on how to build an AR. So I'm gonna build an AR from scratch with brand new components and I'm super excited about them. Some new stuff, some old stuff, but it's just, I'm gonna make an AR pistol just kind of exactly how I want to make one. And it's gonna be kind of like my main duty. I'm not a duty person, I'm just a civilian, but it's gonna be like my main duty gun that I'm just gonna be shooting the most. So I'm gonna walk you through the components on that. So I'm getting some of them. A lot of them have shipped already and they'll be coming in, but then I'm gonna ship it off to get coated and then so it's gonna be a custom coated, I think I'm gonna do like some kind of multicam black coating because I love multicam black like I think I just said. And that video is gonna be sweet because I'm gonna show you every aspect of it to kind of just a beginner's guide to building AR-15s to kind of demystify it for those of you that haven't built them before. Uh, it's not a super tricky process. I don't know how long the video is. I don't think I'm going to do a series because I'll just try and knock it out in one video without being too long-winded, but I'm going to be at some point getting milling done and maybe some paint and some other stuff done to my CZ P10C. I found a trigger. So you know my biggest gripe, one of my biggest gripes I think about the CZ P10C was the trigger face, the trigger shoe. I didn't like it. So I found a new one by HB Industries. Picked up one of those, haven't installed it yet, but it's gonna, I think it's gonna solve my biggest gripe with the P10, and then I'm gonna add some serrations and an RMR just because I want, I wanna trick that gun out. Maybe I'll carry it, maybe I won't, we'll see. But P10C project coming up, and then also I talked about how much I like the M&P M2.0. I may also do some work on that some slide work and maybe some Cerakote as well. So stay tuned, there's a lot of custom gun projects coming up on my channel that I'm excited about. I haven't, I kind of took a long hiatus from building custom guns. Uh, I have 
you know, a handful of custom Glocks and all my AR-15s I built, but I haven't in a while and I've been wanting to, so I'm gonna do that. My 1022. So I was browsing, I was browsing through Optics Planet like I do from time to time to see what kind of cool stuff they have, and I saw this tactical solutions kit, and I was like, I need it so bad. And coincidentally, it was around the same time that my friend Philip picked up his own custom one. It was like mispriced at Cabela's and he got it for super cheap. And anyways, I was dro been drooling over it since he got it, so I needed one, so I got it. I've always kind of wanted a custom tricked out 1022, uh, so I bought pretty much everything that I needed to build it from Optics Planet, and the only thing that they didn't sell was the actual receiver, which is the actual firearm. So you can just buy receivers. I got mine on Gun Broker and got it shipped to my local FFL and put it all together. Super easy to put together. I had, I've never built a 1022 before, but it just took a couple minutes. So that's that. Also, while I was browsing Optics Planet, I realized they started selling bows. Uh, I think they sell crossbows and then compound bows and you know probably some recurves. Anyways, I was interested in picking up a compound bow. So my brother is a hunter, rifle, and then he just recently started doing bow hunting. Uh, the majority of my shooting buddies are into hunting, uh, and they, two of them also just recently got into bow hunting. So I've always kind of been interested in bows, and I'm not a hunter currently. I have nothing against hunting. I think hunting is great. I feel bad eating meat from the grocery store where I'm pretty sure the animal's been mistreated and that kind of stuff. So I love I love eating meat, so I'm not going to like become a vegetarian because I feel so bad. But I do want to shift over to killing my own food. Uh, so I, I think I'm going to start getting into hunting probably next year. I need to take my hunter safety course, which is just so stupid in Colorado anyways. I got to do something and then I got to go to like an eight hour course where they teach me stuff that I knew since I was three. Uh, so I just need to carve out some time to do it. But it's hard for me to carve out time to do that kind of stuff when it seems like such a waste of time. Anyways, picked up a bow from Optics Planet that I'm going to talk about. And I ordered a uh, like one of those deer targets because I can shoot on, I have an acre so I can shoot on my property. So I'll be doing a bow video coming up but I'm a total noob. So it's going to be like bow from new perspective because I don't know anything about bows. So. so here's the bow I was talking about earlier. It is a PSE Madness Epics. I'll link to it below if you're interested. It's the whole package uh, and I know you can buy kind of a nicer bow and piece it together but since I'm just starting out I figured this would be fine and would be more than sufficient for everything I need. So anyways this is it and I live out here in the mountains uh, on an acre and I have a wood pile over there that I'm gonna use as a backstop and I ordered one of those deer targets so I'll be shooting it and it's just kind of fun whenever I've shot my friend's bow or my brother's bow I was like this is just like a fun little thing to do to I don't know just for enjoyment relieve some stress or whatever so anyways I'll be talking about this in a future video I might change out this obnoxious red piece though if you're wondering so here it is it's a takedown so this is the rear portion and this is the front portion so you'll get the stock i'm going to go ahead and just to make it easy i'm going to link to everything you need below to build the complete thing because i may miss something while i talk about it anyway so this is a taxol barrel it's a fluted aluminum barrel that is lighter than the stock barrel on the 1022 takedown so you get this sweet looking big thick bowl barrel but it's lighter this is like a joke how light it is and this is just, you'll get this piece, everything on it, it's got M-lock, so if you want to add attachments or whatever you can there, as well as a fiber optic front sight here. The rear, you need to get some other pieces to make it complete, essentially. Uh, I ordered a different top channel, so if I didn't have the red dot sight here, I could still use the front sights. So both of the front sights are on the front part of this, the takedown, they're on the barrel. So this, I don't know if you can see it. You can kind of see, it's got the mount on it right now, but you can see daylight through here, right? So that is this channel that will allow you to have this mounted 
but still also use your iron sights. Now for my setup, since I have a red dot on it, I can't, I can kind of barely see the iron sights through here, but they're not really usable. But if you didn't have this mounted, if it was on like a quick release and you took it off, you could use this. I think this is like a UTG, uh, kind of a cheap thing, super cheap, but I'll link to it. It's been holding up fine for me so far. The other thing you'll see in here, fancy, is this Timney trigger system. It's a Oh, sorry, forgot I had the mag in there. So it's this whole system comes with the mag release and this trigger. This trigger is crazy, crazy nice. I'm not gonna go into too much details about it. If you're really interested, you can kind of look on the site and get some more details. But I thought the red looked cool and it just is amazing, an amazing trigger. Uh, I actually, I accidentally, I'm not sure if it came that way. I think I broke it because I think I was stupid and when I got it, I was just fooling around with it and dry fired it and broke a pin. Emailed Timney, they said no problem, got one in the mail to me next day. I mean, it was amazing. So Timney customer support, awesome, because I broke something because I was stupid. In the top here, what you need is the actual receiver and the bolt. I also got an aftermarket, like extended handle here, so it sticks out a little bit more than the stock one, but that's pretty much it. That's all you need to build a super sweet 1022. Now this is on the regular Magpul Hunter stock and I just think it looks cooler than like the backpacker stock even if the backpacker stock maybe is a little more functional because it like clicks in or whatever. I just really much prefer the looks of this. I got all black, black on black, murdered out. The only thing I may add probably is my friend Philip has a higher like cheek rest here and shooting his was actually a little bit more comfortable than the stock one. So I I don't know what that is off the top of my head, but I'll link to it. That's the only upgrade that I'll probably change off of this. And then we have the Burris Fast Fire 3 on here. Nice, beautiful little setup. So anyways, super lightweight, toss it in a backpack, whatever. When you're ready to go, put this on here, clicks in, and then it rotates. And then you're ready to go. So then you have a sick, sick little setup. Like I mentioned, we have the thread protector. And this is nice, you can almost not even tell it has one unless you get it kind of in the light here because the, it's so, the seam is so nice. So this comes off and then you're left with an exposed threaded barrel. So let's show a little bit of shooting with it. Here we are at my brother's house. Kind of windy as you can probably see. But hopefully you can still hear me. So I have some Gemtep Subsonic and then I just have some Mini Mags. These are Supersonic. So I'm gonna just, hopefully you can hear through the mic the difference a little bit between the Supersonic and the Subsonic, both uh, suppressed and unsuppressed. So what I'm gonna be doing so you can hear the difference is loading two Subsonics and then two Supersonics uh, through the whole mag. We're gonna start off here uh, unsuppressed with two subsonics followed by two supersonics and then two subsonics uh, for the whole mag here. So that's in and here we go. So as you could probably hear the difference. And now we're gonna go suppressed. So this is a shirt. This is actually multicam. What do you guys think about this one? You said the other design was a little too loud, so I was trying out some different stuff. So here, ooh, suppressor case is multicam too. So here we have an AAC. and we'll just thread this on. And so most 22 th suppressors are just direct thread. So you just thread this down, screw it down by hand, and now we have a suppressed 1022. And it took my ears off. So you'll probably notice this time, I'm gonna do two supersonics first, followed by two subs for the rest of the mag and you'll probably be able to hear more of a dis difference uh, on the suppressor. So 
So that was 10 rounds, two supers, two subs. Subs are very, very quiet, suppressed on a 22. And supers, they're, I think technically they're hearing safe, but definitely noticeably louder because you get that supersonic crack. So as you can see, had no problem cycling the subsonic or the supersonic. That was Gemtech. I haven't tried a whole lot of stuff because this thing is relatively new, but the Gemtech subsonic ammo seems to cycle this thing, suppressed or unsuppressed, no problem. Uh, some subsonic ammo with some semi-auto uh, pistols and rifles doesn't cycle it all the way, so you have, it's like a single shot, so you shoot it, you got a racket, shoot it, racket. Awesome that it does cycle it. So here with the thread protector off, we just have threads and then a direct thread 22. So depending on your 22 suppressor, sorry, depending on your suppressor, it may be close to the width of the barrel. This one is pretty close. So it's a pretty slick looking setup and a pretty slick firing setup. I showed earlier, but let me take it apart. With the suppressor on, this package becomes virtually the same size between barrel and kind of the rear stock portion. So yeah, I just really wanted kind of a little plinker 22 for a long time. 22 for a number of years, ammo was really hard to get. Uh, so I just kind of gave up on the 22 platform. I sold my, I had a 1022 in the past, it was just kind of a crappy one. Sold it and I do have an M&P 1522, so I have an AR-1522. Uh, but I don't know, I like the idea of the, the 1522 because it was like the same training platform and anything, everything. But I don't know, there's just something cool about a little tricked out 1022 that I always wanted. And now, Tactical Solutions makes it super easy to just get a sick, sick 1022. And the takedown is just like a whole new level of coolness as well. So if you're looking for a sweet little 22, really man, I can't recommend this enough. It is sick i love it they have a bunch of different color combinations too i was debating you know like fde or od but i decided to go with just classic black on black with a little bit of red accent with that timney trigger anyway super pleased with the setup people were asking about it i've been meaning to do a little video on it so here it is little 1022 awesome i love it if you have a 1022 of your own and you want to give me some tips and tricks like some accessories that I really should toss on here or some kind of tuning that will make it better, uh, I know you can buy different aftermarket bolt carriers. This is just a stock kind of Ruger one, so nothing fancy in here. Uh, works well though. Uh, I have a few hundred rounds through it, so not a ton of rounds by any means, but haven't had any issues and it's just, I don't know, there's something cool about just plinking with the 22 that you don't get out of other guns. So that's it guys. Sorry that this video was so random and that most of it was just me talking in my car. But like I said, I wanted to put out a quick video and didn't have a ton of time. So we're just throwing this together, toss it together, get it on the internet for you guys. And thanks for watching. If you liked this video, if you found it helpful, informative, if you thought this 1022 was sick, feel free to like and comment the video, get subscribed to the channel. Uh, yeah. And like I mentioned earlier while I was driving, a lot of cool things coming up. So stay tuned, get some subscribed. I'm gonna give you a little hint right now. And so you're gonna wanna get subscribed and you're gonna wanna become part of the notification squad. So you get a little notification when I upload a new video. I'm gonna, not always, not always, and I don't even know when, probably not next video, but at some point for the notification squad people, I'm gonna say, hey, I'm gonna give away like a little prize. It's not gonna be anything big, not like a, not gonna give away a gun, just like a little, you know, like a patch or something to reward people that are watching my videos when they get uploaded. So if you're not part of the notif notification squad, become a part of it. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, guys, I hope you've been great and I will catch you guys in the next video.